Austin, and I'm coming to you again live from Vault Springs, Texas. You know, I get so excited every time I know that I'm about to be videoed, and I'm excited to know that I'm able to come into your home on your laptop, uh, on your phone, whatever device you use, you can just tune in, and here we are together again. And I tell you, I'm just, just saying, bubbling over on the inside, knowing that I'm able to come and communicate with you one more time. We don't know what tomorrow holds. And so while we have an opportunity, we want to seize it as though it were the last. I thank him. Hallelujah. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him over and over and over again for you, all of our listeners. White Rock, God bless you. For all of our supporters, those of you who are giving to the ministry and supporting us financially, we just thank God for you. But above all, we thank God for those who are listeners, those who are tuning in to the videos. And we pray God's blessing upon your life that you will receive this word in earnestness. As the days are evil, we're living in the last days, and I want somebody to be saved. I desire that you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you. I didn't come to preach prosperity today. Amen. I just came to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a word of encouragement for you today because I know that some of you are still going through. And after I finished praying, I went to lie down and the Lord just came to me in such a peaceful way. And the scripture just jumped right up out of my spirit in Matthew 7. And that's where we're going today. I want to encourage you. Don't stop asking. Hallelujah. Don't you dare stop asking God. No matter how hard it gets. No matter what you're going through. He will come and see about you. And that's what I want to share with you today. Please don't stop asking. His word encourages us. As a matter of fact, his word commands us to not stop. And so some of you that might have thought about giving up, throwing in the towel, getting mad, because you know what, look, I do the same thing. There are times when it seems like I've asked God over and over and over. And as I'm, I have to point my hand up to heaven and say, are you still there? Have you forgotten about me? That's how the old folk used to do. I'm still here, Lord. Come see about me. So I want somebody else to say the same thing. Come see about me, Lord. Come see about me. I need you to hear and answer my prayer. Let's go to the word. Amen. God bless you. Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to begin with verse 7. Amen. <clears throat> and it reads as follows Ask and it will be given to you Seek and you will find Knock and the door will be opened to you For everyone who asks receives The one who seeks also finds and the one who knocks, hallelujah, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son or daughter asks for bread, would you give him or her a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, please listen, will your Father in Heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Notice it says your Father in Heaven. I want you to know that that means you've got a relationship with the Lord. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Amen. We know that that's the golden rule. But I want to share with you a few things that the Lord laid on my heart and my spirit pertaining to 
not giving up, not ceasing to pray, not ceasing to ask over and over and over. The first thing I want you to do is to understand that when you're asking, seeking, and knocking, you're doing it in an attitude and a spirit of prayerfulness. You are praying to God in reverence. The scriptures tell us. Now Jesus was telling his disciples a parable to make a point that they should always pray and not faint. Amen. The Lord himself taught his 12 disciples, don't stop praying. Don't stop asking. Don't give up and don't lose heart. Now, when I listen to all those things, I'm thinking that, you know, there are times and days, weeks, months when you just can't take any more. The Lord knows that. But it's personal. And you've got to understand that he's working some things out in you. And he wants you to continue coming to him with an attitude and a spirit of prayerfulness. We too often stop praying. We stop praying. I'm talking to someone today who has stopped praying because you felt like God was not listening. You felt like he didn't hear you. And above all, you felt like he was not coming because he didn't come when you wanted him to. Don't you think the Lord knew when he told his disciples, there are going to be some days and times when it seems like I have forsaken you, that I'm no longer with you. But I want you to understand what I'm teaching you. You ought to always pray. Stay before God, your father, in prayer. Don't you even try it as far as giving up and don't faint, don't lose heart on this journey. Oh, it's gonna be hard sometimes, children. It's gonna be hard, but you can make it when you pray, hallelujah. I just know for sure he will come. So the first thing I want you to do is to be prayerful. Secondly, understand that this is personal. When the Lord is speaking to us in his word, he says, ask and it will be given to you. I'm an English teacher. And that means it's a command. He's commanding you to not, I mean, he's commanding you, excuse me. He's speaking to you. It really should be phrased, you ask, you seek, and you knock. Are you with me? Are you hearing God today? He's giving us a command and it's threefold. Ask, seek, and knock. Now, when I noticed as I was studying this, asking implies that there is a great need. There's a great need. There's a desire. There may be even a burning desire. Seeking means there is a sense of loss. You only seek which you do not have or you had and it is now gone. You're seeking God. You're seeking him. And when you knock, it means you have gotten up out of your prayer and walked in obedience and you've done the things that God has commanded you to do. Knocking means persistence. Have you ever had someone knock on your door, ring the doorbell over and over and over? <laughs> You'd be like, why are you doing that? Why are you constantly knocking? Why are you ringing the bell so much? Think about it. Even though it sounds like it's aggravating to us, it's not bothering God because he was the one that commanded us to do this, ask him today, ask him tomorrow, ask him next week, seek 
God. Turn your face toward him. Seek what it is he wants to do in your life. Seek what it is that you want him to do for you. And then knock on the door. The door meaning an opportunity. Jesus says, I am the door. Isn't that amazing? You're only turning around and coming right back to the Lord. It's personal. And that's what I love about serving God. Your relationship with him is personal. So I'm challenging you today to be prayerful and to make your prayer personal. Thirdly, keep it private. I had to learn the hard way on my journey. I never forget my prayer partner used to always tell me, stop telling folk about what you want the Lord to do and how God is moving because many times they may be have, they might have been sent by the enemy to set up traps and snares to deceive you to take you away from and so when you go to the Lord the word of God tells us to come privately amen <clears throat> listen to what the scripture tells us and when you pray it's personal right do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the street corners and to be seen by others. Glory be to God. In other words, go somewhere by yourself to be alone with just you and God. He says, truly, I tell you, they have already received their full reward. But when you pray personal, prayerful, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Are you hearing the Lord? Go into your own room. Some scriptures say your secret closet. In other words, you've got to find a place, a literal place where you can be alone to pray, to talk, to fellowship, and to commune with God, to seek Him, and to knock at the door of His mercy and grace. It tells us in the Word that the Lord is unseen. We, we don't see Him, but He sees us, and He hears us, and He knows what we've come to Him for. It says, and when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. In other words, you don't have to use vain repetitions. You don't have to keep saying the same thing over and over and over. Sometimes rather than asking, I just thank him. I thank him for what he's going to do. I thank him for what he's promised me. But I'm still there. I'm still there in prayer. I'm still there seeking. And I'm still there knocking. Amen. But he tells us, keep it private. I love to serve the Lord and to pray to him in private. Because when it's in private, nobody has to know but just me and the Lord. And here's the most beautiful part. It told us in the scripture. Truly I tell you, they have already received those who have done what they've done in the open. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. What does he say? Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I love it when folk come to me and say, how did you, how did you get that? How? Because they were waiting to see something that I never talked about, never shared with them. There are things right now that as I'm preaching this word, I know God is going to do for me that many of you do not know anything about. And yet I know he's going to do it. He's never failed me. He's always come, not when I wanted him, 
but he's always come on time. And he's blessed me openly so that those who thought that Daryl wasn't doing anything, that nothing was going on in his life, that the ministry didn't have anything happening, all of a sudden, here it is made manifested right before my eyes and before their eyes. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that because now you can be able to go to God in prayer, to make it personal. He's your heavenly father, but above all, make it private. Amen. Next. I want you to learn how to persevere. Amen. Learn how to persevere. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, some things folk labor for is not in the Lord. Everything everybody's laboring for is not in the Lord. My labor is in the Lord. And so I'm encouraged by his word today. I'm encouraged by the promises of his word that I can keep moving steadfastly. I don't have to sit down and pout and throw a hissy fit. I've got to keep moving. I've got to be unmovable. Nothing should get in the way. And it says always abounding, increasing in the work of the Lord. Because I know that my labor in him is not in vain today. And so I rejoice in knowing that I can keep moving. I'm getting up. I'm on my feet. I'm pushing forward. And let me share this with you. Some days the body just doesn't feel like it. But I remember the old folk would say, you've got to learn how to press. You've got to press on your journey. Times when you don't feel like it, get up and move anyhow. And before you know it, you start feeling better and you've accomplished so much more than you ever thought you would. Amen. I'm out of time. God bless you. I love you with my whole heart. And <clears throat> Lord say the same. I'll be right back. Amen.